You're a Formula One driver, which yeah, but is one of the most gas-guzzling sports in true. the world. Yeah, it's true. And I mean, it's... Does that make you a hypocrite? It does. It does. Let's not beat around the bush. Formula One is bad for the environment. F1's total carbon dioxide emissions are 256,000 tonnes per year. It's the same amount some countries produce. F1 cars emit massive quantities of carbon dioxide. Travel logistics creates an absurd environmental impact, and teams' factories produce massive pollution. Enter Countdown to Zero, an initiative for F1 to become carbon neutral by 2030 in every way, with races, production, and travel behind the scenes. It seems like a utopia. Almost definitely is. Going from 250,000 tonnes of carbon emission to deadly squat in just seven years is a colossal undertaking. So how will they actually do it? The short answer is, they won't. I'll get to why this is shortly. After breaking down the report, actual F1 cars are surprisingly only 0.7% of the emissions. It could have been worse, but turbos and hybrid power units have decreased the engine's fuel use throughout the years. In 2012 and 2013, F1 saw lots of protest against the races, especially during European events. At this time, they were using V8 engines, which only had 30% thermal efficiency. Before the introduction of the V6 turbo in 2013, the average fuel consumption per race was around 160 litres. With the V6, thermal efficiency was boosted to 50%, which is huge compared to any other car. The maximum fuel limit of a Formula 1 car is now only 110 litres. This means all the cars combined only use 150,000 litres of fuel for an entire season, including pre-season testing and all the other sessions in between races. For comparison, a Boeing 747 uses the same amount of fuel for a 10-hour flight. Emissions are high, but in relative terms, it isn't horrible, but something else certainly is. 45% of emissions come from logistics. The fact that F1 is a global sport makes its logistics insane. Flying is one of the biggest contributors to carbon emissions. It turns out F1 teams have to fly multiple times to make it to these races, and they carry a lot of stuff with them. Teams are mostly based in Europe. This means the European leg of the competition is the easiest in terms of logistics. First, because the teams are already there, and second, because, well, in Europe, you can drive to any country. And the cost of shipping by truck is so comparatively low compared to shipping by plane, that teams bring whole buildings on the road to these European races. I mean, these buildings are called motorhomes. They can be as large as Red Bull's three-story structure that includes offices, bars, and a restaurant. Outside of Europe, we have the flyaway races. This is where things get tricky. Most races occur two weekends from each other, but sometimes they can go back to back. The teams have to take all the stuff, like cars and buildings, over gigantic distances. Just take the journey from Bahrain to China, for example. It's over 4,000 miles of travel with huge amounts of cargo. I dread to think the carbon emissions. But F1 could use a little bit of creativity to counter that. Like, why on earth does each year's competition focus on one part of the globe at a time? So teams aren't being yo-yoed around the globe at any one time. Yet even if F1 eliminated all emissions related to logistic, there's another elephant in the room. 19% of emissions come from car production. Every team is hell-bent on achieving the goal of producing the fastest car, blind to the tons of carbon emissions their factories and facilities are releasing. Worrying about renewable energy just isn't a priority. Engineers discard and replace numerous parts throughout the season in search of highest performance. Plus, crashes destroy multiple components, causing more to be produced. But what about recycling? Well, F1 car parts are difficult to recycle due to the violent nature of crashes. Yet car parks wrecked in crashes are not even the worst part. The tyres are the real villains. They are the one of the least environment-friendly parts of the car. Research found pollution from tyres is a thousand times worse than exhaust fumes in cities. Although the main component in a tyre, rubber, 
is of vegetal origin. The tile's outer layer is made of plastic which comes from oil. Around 23 litres of oil go into one tyre. Plus, tyres have a serious impact on coastal areas because they contribute to marine contamination. But the organisation took some measures to counter that by reducing the number of tyres used every race. Before tyre reduction, over 9,000 tyres were used in a season. So it's true Formula One has taken a few steps toward becoming environmentally friendly. But the report paints F1's impact as 250,000 tonnes of carbon emissions. A few steps just won't cut it. It seems like we already have the solution to zero emissions. Just abandon F1 for Formula E. Well, that's not how it works. First things first, the FIA couldn't just make F1 electric. F1 races need to have to cover at least 305 kilometers or 190 miles in less than two hours. But the batteries for an electric car 11 years ago when Formula E started being discussed couldn't handle that. And the FIA had to decide to change F1 to electric, they would have changed the nature of the sport completely and fans would become furious. Besides, the car companies in F1 didn't even make electric cars they didn't want to start. Changing their ways, far too much work. The solution was to create a brand new championship separate from F1. The aim was to push technology forward. In 2014, electric cars could only get 250 miles per battery charge. That statistic is even worse when we remember the faster you go, the more you deplete the battery. So at the time, electric cars couldn't even handle a whole race even if it was shorter than F1s. Drivers needed to change cars mid-race. Now technology has improved enough for the drivers to finish the whole race with just one car. So now that electric car batteries have improved, could F1 go electric? Now, electric cars are even close to F1 speeds, plus Formula E has an exclusive contract with the FIE. Only Formula E can be fully electric until 2039. So that's not the way out of Formula 1. In fact, at this stage, I don't think there is a way out of Formula 1 in its current setup. This brings us back to the countdown to zero, you know, the carbon neutral initiative we raised at the start of the video. Is this initiative F1 saving grace? No, it isn't, at least according to me. Why? Well, I think this is nothing but a clever move to buy the organisation a positive reputation among environmentalists and the media for seven more years to come, as they've been seen to be working hard behind the scenes. Are they really working hard behind the scenes? F1 has been seen to be undertaking several initiatives, and these initiatives are unfortunately so far behind schedule, so far away from where they need to be to meet the target. For instance, F1's colossal pledge to move all team facilities and factories to renewable energy and adopt net zero technology for heating, ventilation, air conditioning and air power is due by 2025. Yep, all race facilities will be completely renewable by 2025, only two years from now. How likely is that? It feels to me that all of F1's countdown to zero is the way of simply buying more time putting off making any real, tangible action. They're baby steps compared to the work necessary to pull off zero carbon emissions by 2030. Here's the most ridiculous thing. They have an out from their countdown to zero commitment. If they don't reach their target by 2030, they'll just plant a lot of trees instead. Yep, that's right. F1 has absolutely no reason to actually meet the targets other than keeping environmentalists and the media happy, which they've done successfully with the Countdown to Zero campaign. This buys them another seven years of peace and quiet and a positive social image because until 2030 actually takes over, no one can say they've failed. Environmental impact is not Formula One's only social problem. Turns out the sport is also racist. Click here to find out more.